Welcome to the SNAP screencast number four. In this screencast, we're going to uh, keep going from where we were in screencast three by finishing this physics engine or this program that has, uh, has user input, does some things in the middle and creates a motion map, and then has uh, output at the end. Okay, so briefly where we left off, we had uh, the time sprite is really uh, where we put all their information for the beginning. Uh, that's where we had the user input, where these questions were asked. Uh, this is the thing that was doing the calculations, and then it's broadcasting these signals called move, and when it does that, the green car and the red car are responding to those by moving to that position and then putting a stamp for their location. All right. Uh, a couple things I'd like to do to finish this up. Uh, first of all, I'm just noticing that the, the green car I really wanted to be facing to the left, and it wasn't. Uh, so here's a way of fixing that. There's hopefully some better ways of fixing it too. But um, I'm just going to give it a different command that's going to cause it to turn. So I'm going to say when the space key is clicked, and this is for the green car, uh, I want it to point in the direction negative 90 degrees, which it says is to the left. Okay, and actually I'm just going to do that right now. If I press the space bar, uh, the green arrow is now pointing to the left. Let's run that same program again. And there we go. We see the green car is pointing to the left. I'll just enter some numbers in. Say the red car moves at 60. The green car moves at 20. And here they are heading towards each other and stopping right there. All right, next what I'd like to change or add about this is I'd like there to be some sort of output. And uh, I'm going to have it displayed on the screen. So now that the motion map's complete, we're going to be outside of that loop, and I'm going to go to the Looks tab, and I'm going to have it, uh, this program say some things. So I'm going to have it say the following statement. Oh, and this should be not in the loop, outside the loop. I'm going to have it say, uh, this takes about, for two seconds, I'm then going to have it say, uh, and I'm going to grab the time variable, and it's going to just state what that number is. So, uh, for example, in this time, it, in this case, it took five seconds. This takes about, and it's going to say the number five. And then let's finish this by saying seconds. Um, now, actually, the user could have figured it out if you look in the, the top of the um, stage. The values of each of the variables is listed, and you can look and read that the time was five seconds at the end. But I'm also going to have it be an explicit output, something that it actually is, is stated. Um, now, I'm deciding to have this say just for two seconds, so display in the screen and go away. It's also possible have it to have it stay on the screen. Um, I've been having issues with, with this just generic say block. Uh, it'll say it, but then the next say block will be right over the top of it, like the bubble with the actual words be in the same location on the screen. So there's probably ways of changing that. I'm not sure how to do that right now. All right, let's try our program one more time. I'm click the green flag. Uh, let's say same thing. Let's say the speed, the red car moves at 60, the blue car, let's say 10 this time. Is that the green car that is? Watch them move towards each other. You can actually, let's see, this takes about six seconds. Um, and actually, one of the reasons I, I said this takes about is you'll notice that in this case they didn't meet at the exact same location the red car passed up the green car just a little bit and so this is going back to our repeat loop where we said repeat either until the red car position equals the green car position or until it's larger than the green car position which is what happened here okay this is almost uh, everything i wanted to show you one other just quick thing this is an idea uh, which is that the time costume Right now, that is a, it's this you know, gray or black arrow that's in the middle of the screen. Um, what we might think about doing is having this costume be like the background or the backdrop. So I'm going to go to the um, paint new costume. And I don't know, let's imagine that this is a road that, this is, that these things are driving on. So I'm going to grab uh, the, the line tool. I'm going to do my best to draw a straight line across. Do another, draw another straight line across. And how about 
same thing I'm going to draw you know, to make this look a little bit more like a road. A yellow line. Okay, and since this that object itself is not actually going to be moving, if I uh, click OK, that's just making that look like the backdrop. So it won't actually change any of the way that the program runs. Um, so how fast will the car move between 40 and 60? Let's type in 50 this time. How fast will the green car move? Let's say 15, and then there they go, heading towards each other. All right, this takes about seven seconds. All right, so that's it for screencast number four. Thanks for watching.